In the summer of 2024, I spent four weeks in China. I took my Brompton with me so that I could show what it's like to ride a bike there. This is the first of probably three videos of what I experienced while riding in China. Please like this video to encourage me to get the subsequent China videos out more quickly and subscribe so you don't miss when they come out. To be clear, these videos are about riding a bike for everyday transportation. These are not videos about bike touring. In this Bike Bike Nudge Nudge video, I will show what biking infrastructure is like in China. I will show the differences in infrastructure between the urban cores of cities, their suburbs, and a rural area. I recorded video in three different cities, Shanghai, Hefei, and Wuchang. I visited these three cities due to my family commitments, so I'm fortunate that they allow me to compare a very large, a medium, and a very, very small city. Shanghai is the most populated city in China, with an official population of nearly 25 million, and a shadow population of maybe 5 million more. Hefei is the capital of Anhui province, and has an urban population of over 5 million. Wuchang is also in Anhui, and has a population of about 200,000. Just for comparison, at 5 million, Hefei is the 23rd most populous city in China, but is nearly as big as Canada's largest city, Toronto. Wuchang is a minuscule town by Chinese standards, but has about the same population as Regina, the 18th most populous city in Canada. Let's start our look at Chinese bike infrastructure with the older urban cores of the cities. All three cities have varying quality of bike infrastructure in their cores. There are some fully protected bike lanes, but there's also just painted lanes or nothing. Even when they're protected lanes, they're often used by drivers for parking, or access to parking. In Hefei, the bike lane was blocked for a farmer's market. That made me feel right at home, as I have a previous video on this channel about a farmer's market that blocks a bike lane every Sunday in the summer. The only difference is that, at home, there aren't tons of other protected bike lanes nearby. It appears that there is a competition for road space and urban cores. This competition is similar to what happened in North America, but is delayed by 60 or 70 years. My La Po lived in Wuchang in the mid-90s and in Shanghai in the early 2000s. She remembers many people walking or biking and lots of buses in the streets at those times. She says Shanghai especially had streets full of buses. She does not remember seeing many cars in the streets. From what I've been able to find, the protected bike lanes have been in Chinese cities since about the 1970s, but government support for biking has waxed and waned. There are links to two papers on the history of biking in China in the show notes. There seems to have been an effort to separate walking, biking, and driving very early on in Chinese cities. In the urban core of cities, there is a competition of space, like in all big cities around the world. The difference is that, in North America, the automobile was prioritized starting in the 1920s or 30s. People walking or biking are tired of only getting the leftover scraps and are asking for more space. In China, people walking, biking, and using transit were dominant in cities, but now cars are starting to take up much of that space. With so many mobility options in China, it'll be interesting to see where equilibrium is reached in terms of car use, and how government policy will try to influence that equilibrium. North American cities tend to not have other good mobility options, so the only choice to fight traffic congestion seems to be to demand more SUV lanes, which will only bring more congestion. Repeat ad nauseum. Let's look at bike infrastructure in the suburbs. Here, I found the bike infrastructure to be better than in the urban core. The planners obviously knew the mix of different modes and planned for each. Also, unlike in North America, there isn't one dominant mode, so planners don't consider SUVs first and everything else as an afterthought. I found that the suburban streets in China were very comfortable for biking. Nearly everywhere I went had protected bike lanes, and it was much rarer for those bike lanes to be blocked by something that shouldn't have been there. I did see something else of interest in Wuchang. All three of the cities I visited had very similar design but Wuchang had a small difference. I happened to have dinner with an urban planner and, while it seems there are national norms for transportation planning, he told me that standards are set at the provincial level. In Wuchang, many of their bike lanes are not open at intersections. To get to the bike lane, you actually have to ride across the sidewalk. I'm trying to use this channel to show how little nudges can have a big effect on the user experience. Riding across the sidewalk doesn't seem like much, but it is a little less convenient than just having the bike lane open at the intersections. As you can see, nearly all the people on bikes and mopeds chose to ride in the car lane instead of the bike lane due to the small design difference. The very low volume of car traffic at the time of filming probably also factors into their decision to take the car lane. 
crossing the sidewalk really changes the experience of going through the intersection. If I lived in Wuchang, I would hope this design is changed. At this point, I'd like to say how I really like Chinese suburbs. North American suburbs tend to be a monoculture of garages with attached houses interspersed with power centers. Transit tends to be poor, and that just encourages more car dependency. My city is doing things especially poorly as it has higher density requirements for new greenfield developments. The density targets still aren't high enough to support transit, especially where developers build one big, super dense condo block so that the rest of the development can be low density, single family housing. This just ensures more people in the periphery of the city are locked into car dependence. Chinese suburbs are dominated by the typical for China, six floor walk up, and more recently, taller condo blocks with elevators. The best part is the first floor on nearly every main street is commercial development. I was staying with my sister-in-law in the suburbs and having restaurants and grocery stores less than a five minute walk from her condo was amazing. This footage was taken at 6.30 in the morning. Due to the nearby density, the shops are already open and there are lots of people on the street walking over to buy their daily necessities. This is the transit station near my sister-in-law. Her family usually accesses it with a five minute moped ride. I know the density is extremely high compared to North American standards and this isn't for everyone. I would struggle since there wouldn't be enough space for me to store my five bikes, but having so many stores so close is great. It's no wonder car ownership is so low in China, even in the suburbs. Finally, even though this is an urbanist channel, I'd like to make a brief mention about biking in rural areas. I rode from Wuchang to the village where my Lao Po grew up and still has family. My GPS took me on some pretty quiet little roads. These concrete roads aren't wide enough for two cars to pass one another and there's a straight drop off of 10 or 20 centimeters along most of them. I was getting a little worried when the road turned to gravel, something my Brompton isn't best suited for, but I made the 15 kilometer ride no problem. I took a more main road on the way back. The drivers were very respectful when they passed me so I didn't feel much traffic stress during the ride. It might have helped that I went on a weekday afternoon, it was about 37 degrees celsius and there's not much bringing people into this area. Chasing chickens isn't a huge tourist attraction. If you try bikepacking through rural China, your experience will probably differ. And that's my look at the biking infrastructure I encountered while in China. It made riding my bike there fairly low stress. Bike lanes are nearly everywhere, especially in the suburbs. Urban centers were a little worse as increasing car use meant that bike lanes were often being repurposed for car parking or the lanes were non-existent. When I first arrived in China, I was very worried about route finding since I was mostly riding on my own and not wanting to have to follow one of my relatives on their moped. With bike infrastructure being nearly everywhere, navigation by bike in China became pretty much like navigation by car in North America. You just enter an address in your favorite GPS app and follow the suggested route. But this episode is just about the infrastructure. I'll have a couple of future videos on China where I get into my actual experience, the rules of the road, and the different kinds of bikes slash mopeds I saw there. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Bike Bike Nudge Nudge on China. Please leave a comment if there was something about Chinese infrastructure that surprised you, or if there's something you'd like me to mention in upcoming videos. Thanks for watching.